Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. NYC Mayor Bill de Blasio compares his suffering to Gandhi. Politico wrote a puff piece about New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio. In the interview, de Blasio compared his struggles as a politician to that of Gandhi. In the interview he discussed why he wouldn't run for president. And about how despite accomplishing major successes, people still don't like him very much. De Blasio chalks up the fizzling of his progressive agenda to being overtaken by the Bernie Sanders campaign, which launched at a much smaller event on the other side of the Capitol two weeks earlier in the spring 2015, but became a phenomenon while focusing on many of the same issues, only with much wider support, writes Politico. De Blasio explained that when he fails he doesn't give up, and doesn't think anyone should give up on his progressive message. I want to talk to anyone who thinks that and tell them they need to start thinking more. I mean, give me a break," said de Blasio. So every time someone tries something and it doesn't work, it invalidates anything else they might do going forward? Tell Thomas Edison that, and Henry Ford, tell Mahatma Gandhi," he said. How many people fell on their faces along the way trying things, experimenting with things, had setbacks? There's no leader who hasn't had setbacks, he said. New York Times praises peaceful Muslim group known as Army of Darkness. The New York Times wrote a disturbingly friendly puff piece about the Muslim terrorist at Gadala who attempted and failed to blow up the New York's Port Authority bus terminal subway station. The piece is called A Mysterious Act of Mercy by the Subway Bombing Suspect. Dhaka, Bangladesh, before Kadala returned home to New York from his native Bangladesh, and tried to blow himself up with a pipe bomb in a crowded Manhattan subway station, he had one last thing to do, an all-night bus ride by himself to help Rohingya refugees. After visiting relatives here in the capital city, Dhaka, he traveled across the country, slept in a mosque and under a tree, and passed out a few hundred dollars of medicine in the crowded refugee camps, they write. But then they write something more disturbing. As a boy, Mr. Allah and his mother made the rounds in Hazaribay, knocking on doors and asking neighbors to go with them to the mosque to pray. They were members of Tabli Jamaat, a peaceful Muslim outreach group, they write. Describing Tabli Jamaat as a peaceful Muslim outreach group is downright offensive. They have been tied to a significant number of terrorist attacks. They're called the Army of Darkness outside of the United States because of their stealthy abilities. They're also able, like water, to take the shape of any group they come into contact with. They're pro-jihad. They're encouraging brethren to go back to the way of Prophet Muhammad. They're essentially accepted by virtually every branch of Islam all over the world. Especially Sunni, writes Rahim Qasim in his book No-Go Zones. Libs are flipping out over what John Kelly said about Robert T. Lee, you'll crack up. White House Chief of Staff John Kelly may have had some conflicts earlier on with President Donald Trump, but appears Kelly has come around to Trump's way of doing things. In a recent interview on Fox News news show The Ingram Engel, Kelly spoke candidly and made comments that enraged liberals. Host Laura Ingram asked Kelly about the removal on Confederate statues and John responded, Well, history's history. There are certain things in history that were good and other things that were not so good. I think we make a mistake as a society, and certainly as individuals, when we take what is accepted as right and wrong, and go back 100, 200, 300 years or more and say, what Christopher Columbus did was wrong. He went on, I would tell you that Robert T. Lee was an honorable man. He was a man that gave up his country to fight for his state, which 150 years ago was more important than country. Kelly added, it was always loyalty to state first back in those days. Now it's different today. 
but the lack of inability to compromise led to the civil war, and men and women of good faith on both sides made their stand where their conscience had them make their stand. Unsurprisingly, John's common sense and honesty did not go over well with liberals, who liked their history revisionist. Wrote an angry Chelsea Clinton on Twitter in response, General Kelly, there is no compromise regarding slavery. Ever. And, the Constitution's original 3-5-THS compromise was an abomination. Wrote another liberal named Walter Schaub, it appears John Kelly is going as a racist for Halloween. I suspect he's also going as one for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Tweeted left-wing Omar Vade, we call for the resignation of John Kelly. We won't tolerate the defense of slave owners. Do you think Kelly should continue speaking the truth and ignore closed-minded liberals? Internet is going crazy over Ivanka and Tiffany Trump's newest bikini video from Mar-a-Lago. Half-sisters Ivanka and Tiffany Trump spent their Christmas at the Mar-a-Lago. They posted a video of them in bikinis to Instagram blowing kisses and wishing America a happy Christmas. While some felt the video was charming and cute, many liberals took to the internet to express their outrage. Hypocrisy is flaunting a five-star Christmas holiday when your president father signed tax cuts that hurt millions of hard-working Americans. And how much do you specifically know about my life? Wrote one user, even though the tax cuts are hugely beneficial to hard-working Americans. Another wrote rich self-absorbed and self-serving skanks. However, rational people fought back. Relax people. Obama vacationed in Hawaii every Christmas, wrote one user. I'm very sure if Obama's daughter were doing this the left would have heart attacks and say um look how wonderful and amazing they are, wrote another. Later that night Tiffany Trump posted a stunning photo of herself in a purple dress. The media wasn't done being outraged though. Ivanka made headlines when she posted a photo of her and Jared on a boat, but hundreds of feet away, you could faintly see a Confederate flag. Therefore Ivanka must be a racist. Ivanka Trump's holiday vacation photos include shot of a Confederate flag, writes Raw Story. CNN hosts throw hissy fit because they can't stop Trump while he's golfing. CNN hosts have not proven themselves to be the smartest figures in the American media, and they certainly have shown themselves to be the most left biased. Recently, however, they have demonstrated just how desperate they have become for a story about Republican President Donald Trump. The president is currently on a Christmas holiday break in Florida and he wanted to unwind by playing a round of golf, which he is certainly entitled to do. However, CNN decided to stalk him by placing cameras near the golf course, even though Trump relaxing is far from a newsworthy story. Thankfully, the president's team outwitted CNN by placing a van in the line of sight between CNN's camera and Trump to afford him some privacy and block them from filming him. CNN hosts Brianna Keeler and Don Lemon could not handle this lack of total and complete access to the president. Sniffed Lemon to Dan Merica, so Dan, you're in West Palm Beach, you're traveling with the president, understand he played another round of golf today. CNN got video of the president playing golf for the last few days. But I understand something different happened today. What was it? Merica replied, as though it was some sort of tragedy or scandal, today. A big white box truck parked in front trying to obscure our shot of President Trump golfing. Now it may seem trivial, but it is important to give video as the president does these things on a daily basis. And goes to something that is larger, the president and the White House have tried to obscure the fact that President Trump golfs on a regular basis. Do you think CNN is pathetic for stalking Trump like this? Prince Harry tried to invite Obama to his wedding, then he got a warning from someone unexpected. Britain's Prince Harry decided to marry an American actress from Los Angeles named Meghan Markle, 
and then thought that the perfect two people to invite to their upcoming wedding in England would be former President Barack Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama. Barack Obama seemed keen on the idea of attending the wedding. He tweeted at Harry following news of the engagement, Michelle and I are delighted to congratulate Prince Harry and Meghan Markle on their engagement. We wish you a lifetime of joy and happiness together. Unfortunately, it does not look like the prince will get his royal wish. A great deal of it has to do with the fact that Obama has been busy pretending that he is still the head of state in America by traveling around the globe and meeting with other world leaders informally on behalf of the American people. Britain's Prime Minister Theresa May is savvy enough to understand what a bad move it would be to have America's ex-president attend a British royal's wedding instead of America's actual sitting president Donald Trump. This is particularly true after London's Mayor Sadiq Khan told Trump he is not welcome there. Stated one British government official, Harry has made it clear he wants the Obamas at the wedding, so it's causing a lot of nervousness. Trump could react very badly if the Obamas get to a royal wedding before he has had a chance to meet the Queen. According to reports, Prime Minister May is going to personally act to squash the Obamas' plan to come to the wedding. Are you glad Barack and Michelle are getting disinvited to Prince Harry's wedding?